from the look of this unit, it's tripped the earth leaky to trip out. Um, I've just tested on there. Oop. 0.25, well, that's the three phases where they come in, so any short anywhere on here will go through either, well, yeah, go through the windings of the compressor and appear to be a short, so we're going to start by checking the crankcase heater because that's a favourite on these. Right, we've took the two um, wires out of the two terminals and we're making sure that's not touching anywhere because if that was touching, a, if that was grounded out, it would look like it was faulty. Ooh, 23 giga ohms. Right, well what we'll do is we'll check the other end because it could be shorted um, but the, the heating element could be broken in the middle. Right, 27 giga ohms, that's not so good. Right, we'll put that back in so we know where it comes from. And the next thing we'll do is we'll check the fan motor because that's had uh, bad bearings for quite a while. And it's outside with no roof on it, it should have a roof over it. Um, of course we've got the, uh, we should have started there, we've got the isolator locked out. The key's in my pocket so I'm not going to turn that on by mistake. Right, so we'll get our live neutral and capacitor wire took out and we'll check them. Right, I've got the live neutral and the capacitor wire all twisted together. You have to be careful, if, if, even if they're touching a bit of plastic, if the plastic's damp it can track through that and make it look like it's faulty. Um, Two giga ohms is starting um, not to look very good for our um, little unit. Um, the only I think could be is the fan speed control. Well, we've got the fan motor wire back in. Um, that's the uh, fan speed control. Um, let me check that. Reading okay, 20 giga ohms. Um, I suppose you well, It's starting to look, because that's the only thing we've got in there. Let's uh, check the compressor wires off and check that. I was going to say it could be the LP switch, but no, that picks its power up in the um, in the contactor up there. It's fed from up there. Right, let's get these out of here and check them. Right, we've got the three compressor um, lock wires disconnected from the terminal strip. I have had these short out in the past, so it's you, you know. Right, well these all tested out okay. Um, we've had a quick look at the contact and that looks okay. I mean with this bin it's not stuck in so that nothing should be able to get back up them wires. Anyway we've retested it and um, there's something fuzzy on that wire which is the one which feeds the um, fan mower which we've tested but um, there might be something odd going on there. Um, anyway, so we might pull these, pull that wire out of there and we test it. Mm. It should be going back up the neutral unless he's got, he's got four pole switches, so he should be switching the neutrals. Because that's the other thing you have to be careful of, is the fault can, well, it doesn't even have to be a fault, it'll go back up the neutral wire. Right, that's the incoming phase, which is okay. So we've got this little link wire here. I can hear it. There's 
and I'm certainly not happy with that. So we'll take the Fenner Alive out. That's happy now. That's on the fan motor. Which is not happy, which is odd because I'm sure we tested that and it was okay. Um, and we'll keep taking wires out and testing and see what happens. This is something weird with that capacitor. I can't see how that would short out. I have had them do it. Right. There we are, I just took that out and that's okay. There's something odd. Unless it's Let's see, is that a crankcase here? Let's try that. Hmm. Maybe it's on the incoming wire from the crankcase here, which is up here. It's Turn that off and see if that makes any difference. No? Definitely something odd. Maybe it's a terminal block. Take the live wire out, and then the only thing connected to it is the crankcase heater and the terminal block. That's fine. Right, well that is coming up to here. So we might be we might just be chase, chasing a trace from the main neutral if the guy who's wired this hasn't um oh uh, well I see what it is. We've got the live up here through the um normally closed contact, down the wheel, down to the breaker. I bet that's gonna be the pressure switch. That's what it is. So we've got our live in at the top permanent live through a breaker. At the bottom of the control circuit straight down the pressure switch which goes through the switch back up to the coil for the contactor and also goes up via this normally closed contact for the crankcase heater. So that's what it is. It'll be the pressure switch which is off of this flex here. I'll put this all back and then we'll check that. Right, that's the uh, pressure switch um, cable. There we are, dead short. Something's gone on in here. Now you see the condensation on the inside. Um, the trick with these to get the cover off is you want to put some um, oil or something on there, WD-40 or something like that, and then just rock them back and forth a bit on all of them, and then just try and prise the cover up as, you, as you're twisting it, and do each one in turn. Right, we've got the control circuit linked out in here. The wires out for the pressure switch. Um, we'll get the cover put on this, and then we'll run this up for five minutes, get the compressor warm, because the oil will be full of gas. And then once we've got it warm, we can pump it down. Um, 
We need to pump it down so we can take these hoses off of here without losing too much refrigerant. But if we pump it down now, it's going to be full of um, liquid refrigerant in the sump because it's been off without the crank heat here on. And uh, when we take the hoses off, even if we pump it down, it'll start leaking again. Chucked on there and give it five minutes. We we'll get some heat in there. Right, we've got the um, receiver valve or the king valve wound in, so it's really restricting the flow. You can see that by the condensation on there and the bubbles in the side. The idea of that is it'll get the suction superheat up um, nice and high and get the compressor hot quicker. But the milk's really cold, it'll be running, you know, the milk's on the milk's cold, the gas coming back is, is cool, cold enough to keep the body cool. Let's get a bit of heat in the bottom now. So I think, I think what I'll do is we'll pump it down. Right, we've got that pumped down into a vacuum. So we can wind this in. It's a discharge valve. And then we can uh, lead that across. And just come up to about zero. So we'll let that sit. If, it's, if it needs to come up a bit more, I can just bump that valve open a bit and let a bit more in. I'll probably shut the suction up, but I bet it'll come up anyway, just with what's coming out of the oil. That saved us having to get the recovery machine out. Right, that's a new pressure switch on there. I've just got to check the settings, uh, recheck these for leaks. Um, and then we've got that cover. It goes over the top. And we've got the little locking plates on here, they go over and lock these so they don't turn or people can't adjust them. <coughs> That's pretty much it, that was the old one. And you can see it's got water in there, it's quite damp, it's probably original to the unit. And they are N, so they're um, or LM in 96. 19 years old, so I got, got their money's worth out of them.